Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, my topic uh, will be on the IoT device management at large scale. My name is William Yan. I represent a uh, company called AV System. Uh, we are a device management specialist, a software company. We provide a management platform for service providers, carriers, enterprises, and OEMs. So we are uh, vendor neutral, uh, connectivity agnostic, multi-protocol. We support fixed networks, mobile networks, and of course, IoT networks of uh, different flavors. Uh, the platform, the management platform, can be deployed over the cloud or on-premise. So uh, we got a list of uh, uh, operators, telecom operators and enterprises already deployed our IoT device management uh, platform, which includes here in the US, AT&T, and there in Japan, uh, SoftBank. So what are they using us for? I mentioned asset tracking. Asset tracking is a major, major IoT use case. Tracking location, temperature, what have you. We do a major activity, it's called over the air services. FOTA, firmware over the air. Or SOTA, system, a software over the air. And uh, we do telemetry reporting. As I started off saying, telemetry data, uh, temperature, location, altitude, moisture level, uh, activity level, really based on your specific use case. So one major piece of what we do for enterprises and for uh, service providers, uh, which relates to the third party, which is the OEM, uh, partners, chipset vendors, Broadcom, Sequence, all these are uh, chipset vendors. And uh, module providers, you probably heard, if you have already started working on your IoT use case, your technology options, you probably evaluate, started evaluating all your options. <coughs> and the CPE uh, provider, CPE stands for Customer Premise Equipment. And of course, integrators. Uh, companies uh, tend to hire system integrators to put all these different pieces together for you. So we provide a device certification and a compliance interoper interoperability testing server. This allows onboarding of all your IoT devices. Number one, make sure it's compliant for industry standard. Number two, also be compliant with your specific use case. So they, these are the major elements of the solution we provide today. All right, some key market observations uh, I want to share with the audience today. Uh, one is expectation of IoT. Of course, if you are here, you already knew billions, billions of devices going to be connected. The expectation is really high, especially with the buzzword of 5G. However, technologies are very fragmented from a connectivity. And the previous speaker just mentioned as his last slide, it showed a, a <coughs> list of uh, uh, short range radio uh, uh, networks plus 5G and NB-IoT. And, uh, and also, messaging protocols or device management protocols, there are a list of them. So the reality of IoT today, if you are in it or you're looking at it, is that a lot of uh, POCs, proof of concepts, real production level of uh, deployment, still very well below expectation. There are a number of reasons I'll get into. One major uh, development in the IoT field is a low power one, low power wide area network emerging as dominant. 
So low power is operating on a small, inexpensive <coughs> batteries, expected to last for a long time. Wide area, they got to cover an efficient area to in, in order to get the data. So in urban, densely populated areas, you expect to cover a couple of two kilometers radius. Or in rural, less densely populated areas that covers 20 or up to 40 kilometers. And uh, so these are the, the low power uh, one networks gaining momentum. All right, so I mentioned the industry challenges and uh, why the production level of deployment are still below expectation. Number one, let's talk, take a look at the connectivity options. So we've got uh, uh, licensed spectrum, AKA, in other words, cellular-based IoT networks, narrowband IoT, LTEM, or islands, island, unlicensed spectrum, Sigfox, LoRaWAN, and uh, many of today's IoT deployment is a, a Wi-Fi network, short range, right? Or Bluetooth network, Bluetooth low power network sent to a gateway. But a key takeaway in terms of connectivity is that it's all use case driven. You need to consider your battery life, how long you want your battery to last. Five years, 10 years? Your data rate, your data packet, the bandwidth you need to purchase to support your pulling the data. And the latency you can tolerate, high latency, low latency, depends on your use case. If you're in the medical care industry versus you're managing a, a, a farming crop, so the requirement for latency is vastly different. And of course, at the end of the day, it's overall cost. And industry challenges in terms of protocol, you know, in terms of device or messaging protocols. Uh, analyst firms, uh, Mac Nation is a Boston-based company. Their specialty is IoT uh, industry. That's their specialty, that's their focus. They've uh, published a, a number of uh, research uh, reports discussing the under-investigated, under-invested area in IoT is the device management. People tend to underestimate the complexity, the need for device lifecycle management. Even Gartner echoes the same sentiment. Device management is a, a very underinvested field in IoT, although it is critically important. Part of the confusion, at least there are a few, there are probably more even, and uh, it can be on this list. People mix mesh messaging protocols <coughs> with device <coughs> management protocols. It's not exactly apples to apple in here. So one popular, <coughs> uh, well-known messaging protocol, it's called MQTT. Uh, it's uh, well-known, mostly supported by the cloud providers, MQ telemetry transport, publish subscribe model. Uh, you got you know, Google, Microsoft, uh, AWS, all support, uh, natively support MQTT. It's more of a messaging transfer. Uh, XMPP, OMRDM, the, if you're in the telecom business for a long time, these are nothing new, it's been around for a long time. You had to deal with what we call them legacy now. Legacy device, right? You're nodding your head. So it's a legacy device. How do you take care of that legacy? One of the challenges in IoT, especially industrial IoT, legacy sensors, they don't even talk IP, right? Co-op is a constrained application protocol. Now we're getting into you know, IoT field. And the lightweight M2M, which is 
the major point I want to share with you today sits on top of uh, COAP. All right, before we go even further with uh, technology, let's take a look at what do you mean, Mr. AV system? What do you mean by device management? Device management typically covers a number of areas, tasks, if you will, device inventory, device onboarding, registration, access, bootstrapping, provisioning, remote control, remote access, configuration remotely, monitoring diagnostics, firmware management. You heard me talk about firmware management a few times. It's a, a, a major challenge to manage your IoT device on a massive scale and the complexity of that. So how do I manage updating the firmware on a massive scale, hundreds, thousands, if not millions of IoT devices? And of course, last but surely not the least, is security. Have a seat, please. Yeah, join us, have a seat. So uh, security and troubleshooting. These are the fundamental elements uh, included in a, in a basic uh, device management platform. I'll give you the answer right away, so, so let's get to it, right? So the question is, how do I do device management on a large scale? And uh, we're talking about potentially millions of uh, devices. The answer is here. I share with you a secret. People not listening right now, they, they, they don't learn the secret. Here's the secret. We need a common industry standard-based platform to ensure interoperability. Interoperability of devices from different vendors, interoperability of uh, from your chipset, being able to support the common platform, your microprocessor, your, um, your module, uh, your sensors. It's a common industry standard-based platform. Now you're gonna ask Mr. AV system, again, where do I find that common industry standard platform? Voila. So uh, I'm bringing in a, uh, a topic here. It's called lightweight machine-to-machine -machine protocol or technology. What is lightweight M2M? Lightweight M2M is initiated, maintained, developed, advanced by a global standard organization called Open Mobile Alliance, OMAR, or OMA. Uh, the new name is OMAR Specworks. So they initiated this technology designed specifically to manage IoT constrained devices. Small size, small data rate, low memory, low CPU. And this is getting noticed now. Getting noticed, getting adopted. So if you look at a technology stack, as I mentioned, lightweight M2M sits on co-op, constrained device, you know, single data packet. So you don't have a fragmentation of the data, right? It's probably a few kilobytes. And uh, fragmentation of data, fragmentation of technology is a major challenge, as we uh, already covered so far. Security, the security layer is common industry standard, DTLS. On the transport layer, it's all common industry standard based. So lightweight m 2 m if you have not heard it in the past, it's been around for five years. First release came out just about three years ago, February 2017. All right, the current release is uh, lightweight M2M 1.1. The 1.2 is just on the horizon at the moment. Again, I'll give you the answer right away. So look at uh, the advantages of a lightweight to M2M as a technology, as a technology for device 
management. You utter low link utilization, small data rate. Power efficiency, remember IoT by nature, characteristic of IoT or IoT device. You need them to be out there for a long time, many years. The battery is limited, and energy consumption is a major concern. And the queue mode allows you to wake up the device only when you need it, when you need to talk to it. You also need a device management plat platform or protocol supports different IoT connectivity networks. And uh, it supports both IP or non-IP data delivery. So why Lightweight M1 okay. for scalable IoT deployments? It solves a few issues. Ready to pull the car. Standardized huh? firmware yeah, updates. Good. No fragmentation. It's plug and play. Auto discovery. Common user interface. <laughs> and where do I find the help with uh, Lightweight M2M? M2? So like I mentioned, uh, is uh, maintained by Omar Specworks, and there are at least 20, 30 major global companies in this uh, uh, membership, EV system, we represent a major contributor to a lightweight M2M working group. And you see EV system right, uh, right there. EV system Coyote IoT platform. We also contribute to the client. You know, your client being your device or your gateway need to be compliant. We provide a free open source version plus a commercial version as well. So quick look at the uh, EV system, Coyote IoT device management, basic element, remote configuration, service provisioning, monitoring, alerting, photo support, photo campaigns, <coughs> remote <coughs> diagnostics. We also, on top of device management platform, uh, Coyote IoT data orchestration, data harmonization from different sources, being able to make sense out of it, to send operational commands, inventory, dashboard, workflow engine, geofencing, uh, reporting, notifications, so on and so forth. Uh, this is not from me. It's from the industry a research body. If you look at who are the thought leaders, who are the ones not only have the thought leadership, but also can execute. Again, AV system is at a right top corner for uh, among all these companies all these companies provides one way or the other different protocols or technologies of uh, device management all right now some of you already started or most of you probably started iot already on a wi-fi network or bluetooth low energy network i said how do i plug into your uh, uh, lightweight m2m what do i do where do i start do I throw away everything? No. The last speaker mentioned in the last slide, all of these connectivity network, they support, and so do we. We support all of these, and what you need to do is, there are two couple of scenarios. One is that you have a gateway, right? If you have a Wi-Fi gateway or your Bluetooth gateway, your sensor is sending data to you, then send over to cloud. All you need to do is upgrade the gateway and the client, your, uh, a client, a lightweight M2M client. Your sensor has a lightweight M2M client. Get somebody certify you. And that's the platform we provide as well. Certify the device, the gateway. And um, so uh, in the second scenario, in the second scenario, you can, especially in cellular network, it's a constrained uh, a network anyways. Uh, you, what you can do, you can even get rid of the, the gateway. The sensor has a, a lightweight M2M -M client, compliant, sent directly, thank you, sent directly, I got warned, <laughs> sent directly to, um, to the management platform which could be a Coyote IoT device management platform that work around in uh, NB IoT network or your cloud provider. So it's an upgrade from your current 
gateway or your sensor to have a lightweight M2M industry standard client on your sensor or your uh, whatever your uh, IoT endpoint is. So two different scenarios. So I have one more slide talking about an industry application. If you ask me today, who are the one most aggressive adopting uh, deploying lightweight M2M in the IoT network? And, um, and you know, uh, service providers for sure, because they have a history legacy of machine to machine management. And uh, all of these uh, uh, activities is horizontal across, you got oil, gas, energy companies, you got transportation companies, of course, as a tracking, right? So, and uh, thank you, that's all I got in, uh, allowed to in 20 minutes. And come see us, we're right there on booth 509, me and my uh, colleague here, Slavomir, and uh, so we'll be more than happy to take a down a little deeper to work with you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for coming. <laughs>